Welcome to a very special episode of Character Evolution Cast. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to X card those theatrics. Oh. oh. Okay, how about some uh, spooky background music then, at least? I'll allow it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as I was saying, this special episode of Character Evolution Cast is all about safety at the table, just in time for Halloween, everybody. It's very spooky. Yeah, very spooky. And our brief demonstration here showed one of the tools in action. But before we dive into this expansion from last week's episode, we have a few announcements. One thing I will note quick, we'll be adding links and information to our Session Zero document as we get more of them, like the original source for Send and Fill safety system that we mentioned in this very episode. So keep an eye on that at sessionzero.charactercreationcast.com. Next up, a catacon is less than two weeks away! Woo! Woo! Both Ryan and I will be there, so please make sure to come find us and get some awesome business cards. Come see our panel that we are doing with James D'Amato, or just, you know, find us around, chit-chat, say hi. Yeah, we would definitely love to meet all of you, and if you're going to be going there, just let us know. Send us a note on Twitter or join us on our Discord. Absolutely. And speaking of which, if you want to talk to us more about what we'll be up to at a Catacon, or just want to chat with us and others who enjoy the show, head on over to discord.charactercreationcast.com and say hi. Another announcement, the Strata Kickstarter is still going strong. They've hit at least seven stretch goals already, and as of this recording, are approaching an eighth. We will have a link in the show notes, so check that out, and let's help them hit even more stretch goals, including naming a goat, maybe. Naming a goat. There are several goat-related stretch goals, and I'm <laughs> all about it, so check that out. As we know, goats are very special in Spire. Yes. And they're fun to ride. Are they? I don't uh, feel like... Apparently, that's what my character and Grant's character did, apparently, for fun. Oh, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. you were riding it around town. Mm-hmm. Spoiler right. alert for a few episodes ago. <laughs> Speaking of helping people out, one way you can help our show out is by leaving a rating or review. We'll have links in the show notes to our Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Facebook pages, which are all excellent places to tell us what you think of the show. And speaking of excellent reviews, we have this one from Liam Belson from the USA. Liam says, This show is great. This show is great, awesome, fantastic, and I love it. Multiple exclamation points there. I really love the systems the show introduces. The hosts are stellar and have a really great dynamic with the guests. And creating characters is one of my favorite things too. So I really love a show that's just about creating characters. It's got really good ideas for creating characters, and I love all the characters and teams and ideas that come out of it. Who I recommend this to? Everyone who loves playing RPGs and creating characters. Thank you so much, Liam. Liam. Yeah. That is very nice. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. I love reviews. I love reviews, too. I love reviews (laughs) from friends especially, too. Liam, good to see you. (laughs) Well, with that out of the way, let's get on with the show, shall we? We shall. Enjoy. Character Evolution Cast, a show where we discuss what to do with all those characters we just made. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan, and today my co-host Amelia and I are sitting down to continue our discussion from last week's Session Zero episode as we take a deep dive into comfort and safety at the table and the tools that you can use to make that happen. 
We've consistently said that one of our goals here is to help people have the best possible experience at the table. And while that involves all sorts of concepts that can enhance the story or the characters, the reality is that the best possible experience starts at a much more fundamental level, with everyone feeling comfortable and safe. It's (laughs) impossible to have a great or even okay experience if you don't feel safe at the table. Exactly. So we've got a lot of uh, different tips and tools for you to feel safe at the table. If you have not listened to last week's episode yet, normally I would say you can listen in whatever order you want, but I would strongly suggest that you go back and listen to our Session Zero episode. We talk about some of these concepts kind of as a broad overview, but now this is going to be a a bit of a deeper dive. But I think that a lot of the stuff that we went over last week is going to be pretty helpful in listening to this one as well. Exactly. We touched on a few things that we're going to be talking about tonight on these today. Whenever you listen to it, you can listen (laughs) to this episode whenever you want. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) We touched a a bit about this last time when we talked about the safety portions of the session zeros. So we skipped over a lot then. Now we'll deep dive into this and we will start off by saying, what do we mean by safety? Safety is going to be anything from unwanted discomfort, so awkward scenes that just kind of make you feel icky, to Mm -hmm. outright trauma. And this applies to both in-game and out-of-game situations. Right. So this this means not just things that come up in the story, because that certainly does happen in role-playing games. Mm -hmm. There are situations that happen in the narrative portion of the game that make you feel uncomfortable or are touchy subjects for you. But there are also things that can happen out of game between you and other players or you and the GM or whatever. So it's important to remember that this applies to the entire role-playing experience, not just Mm in-game. Yeah. Uh, in-game, at the table, away from the table. It doesn't matter what type of safety you're talking about. It's all important to have the right tools so you can navigate the situation in the best way possible. Absolutely. Topics that could be triggering uh, issues of personal character autonomy, forcing people into situations that they're not comfortable with. These are all sorts of things that are pretty unsafe sorts of activities, um, either at the table or away from the table. Right. And when we talk about safety, physical safety is slightly less of a concern in tabletop RPGs versus something like LARP, let's say, but it is still a factor. And so I want to want everybody to keep in mind, too, that we are talking about not just your mental safety and comfort, but in in some situations, your physical safety and comfort as well. Exactly. I mean, you could be playing with a group of friends. You could be playing at a local game store or at a convention with complete strangers. And these sorts of things still apply. You'll be probably a lot more comfortable with your friends, but the people that you are going to be meeting, you don't know their experiences. You don't know what could be triggering, what couldn't be triggering. So these tools are something that is both useful for yourself as well as to assist other players as well. So Ryan, let's start by talking a a little bit more. We covered this in our last episode, but Mm -hmm. why we think safety is important. Like, Why is this a thing that people should consider, especially if they've been playing for years and years and have never really Mm -hmm. incorporated any of this into their planning or into their gaming? Oh, 100%. Especially if you are a a veteran gamer with a group of very close-knit friends and you're going to go to your very first role-playing convention coming up. Maybe it's a catacon or who who knows what. And now you are getting into a completely different world of playing with people that you don't know. Your comfort level is going to be completely different than everybody else's at the table. It's very important because we need to be able to have a standard set of tools that we can access in order to have a more fun experience at the table for everybody. That's pretty much what it boils down to. We play role-playing games for all sorts of different reasons. Some people want to have a very serious game. Some people want to have very fun games. 
Uh, uh, some people want to have very dark games. And all of those are valid ways to play, but you don't want to play or you don't want to decide to play a very dramatic game that leaves you extremely emotionally drained and not have safety kind of in the back of your mind uh, during play. Because uh, when you get deeper into that sort of stuff, it's going to bring up a lot of different emotions that could easily lead into something a lot more triggering for some people. I think one of the really cool things about these kinds of safety tools is that you can have them all available to you and maybe you never mm -hmm. ever use them. If you sit down to play a game and you say like, I, I want a game that has a lot of bleed and is really dramatic and I get to do all of these really mm -hmm. emotional heavy things because those are the kinds, we've talked lots, those are the yes. kinds of games that I like to play. I may never end up using any of those safety tools. I've played plenty of like emotional games and I have not ever personally needed to mm -hmm. use an X card. But the fact that it's available to me immediately makes me feel more comfortable getting yes. myself into that headspace, right? Like I can say, mm -hmm. this thing is there if I need it. It's a safety net. And so just knowing mm -hmm. that that's there already increases yeah. my level of comfort. And so while we want people to use these tools and we want people to have them available if they need them there's also something about just mm -hmm. knowing that they're there and it, it's also really comforting to know that you can use these tools against yourself if you happen to try to push your boundaries in a scene and you start bringing something you're like mm -hmm. okay i've got these safety tools i know if i go a little too far or if we go a little too far i can bring out the safety tool and i'll be fine if you push yourself to your the edges of your comfort level and the scales tip slightly over the edge, you can definitely use that X card on yourself or whatever sort of safety tool that you're using on your own uh, descriptions in order to rewind the game and say, you know, let's take a beat. I went a little too far and got a little too into the scene, so it, it's good to step back and know that you can push yourself and still have a safety net to fall back on and not have to commit fully to the sorts of things that you're you're trying to do in a in a deeply emotional game like that aside from also being just basic human decency i think that this topic is important because while we are playing with imaginary characters in an imaginary world the discomfort and hurt that we can feel from things going wrong or having a bad experience or just even something, like yeah. I said, that feels kind of icky is a very real experience. That's something that we take away from the table mm -hmm. even when we walk away. So while we don't take away any kind of like injuries or anything like that from that, are, you know, that our characters mm -hmm. are dealt in these games, the emotional hurt that we can take away is still very real and it's a very possible thing for us. And so I think it's really, really important to have these kinds of tools in place to make mm -hmm. sure that that doesn't and happen. You don't know what other people have going on in their lives. And as a player, you can't always prepare for what will come up in a game. So uh, talking about safety and comfort openly and honestly ensures that everyone gets to have a great experience at the table, which is the basic first rule of role playing is you have to be having fun. And if you're if if you're breaking somebody's Absolutely. safety, that person's no longer having fun and that's breaking the first rule of role playing is play to have fun. Absolutely. And you know, like I said before too, that we we use the term safety here pretty broadly. This is just your general comfort mm -hmm. level with the situation. You tend to think of safety as like physical safety or, you know, not being harmed, mm -hmm. right? But there are all kinds of harm and there are all kinds of traumas and, and all kinds of things. And really, when we talk about safety here, we're talking about feeling comfortable. We're talking mm -hmm. about feeling welcome. We're talking about just feeling included mm -hmm. and okay. And so there are all kinds of different things that can sort of encroach on mm -hmm. that feeling of okayness. So it could be something that comes up in a character's backstory. 
it, it could be a particular part of a setting that you find really yeah. uncomfortable or problematic or whatever. There are certain story themes that can be really mm-hmm. trying for certain people. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of different things that can come up in a game where anything can literally happen. Um, whether it's introduced by a player or introduced by the GM, uh, it is uh, something to keep in mind in order to, to have the best game possible. The next big question then is when and how do we talk about safety in our games? Well, if you would have listened to our last episode, you would have known that session zero is probably the best time to have a discussion about safety in your game. At session zero, you're establishing things like the general story, the overall tone of the game, and you have a good chance to have an open and honest discussion about what sorts of things that you want in the game and what you want the game to be. Absolutely. I... I'm going to, I'm going to call out my group because we literally just had this discussion earlier today where somebody said, Hey, I have this thing that I want to be part of my character backstory. And this is a thing that we may end up exploring in the game. Is everybody okay with that? And, you know, last time we talked about like your, your hard nose and your soft Mm -hmm. nose, right? Those things that are kind of okay, but like, let's talk about how it's going to come up. And this for me was one of those things where I flat out said, you know what? I'm not okay with it being portrayed this way. If it is going to come up and you feel like it's a very important part of your character story, I'm willing to talk about how that gets portrayed Mm -hmm. and what sort of things we do with that. But it was a really valuable discussion to have and to be able to say, you know what? No, I'm not okay with this. Mm -hmm. Or I'm kind of okay with it, but is this a thing that we can work out together? Mm -hmm. And I was really, like, I'm really glad to be in that kind of group where we can have that kind of discussion. Because if I had gone into that game blind and this player had this story worked out, for me personally, it would have been really traumatic. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important before you have these games to sit down and say, openly and honestly, are we okay with these things? Or for Mm -hmm. you as a player to say, I'm not okay with these things. Yeah. And and that brings up a good point. There's a lot of people that like to play this game uh, pretty blind with only their character's perspective in mind, which usually means not knowing the other player's backstories, not knowing what sorts of things the GM uh, is thinking of doing for it for the adventure not specifics or anything like that of course because no spoilers <laughs> <laughs> maybe but, depends on your yeah position. it depends <laughs> but if, if it, playing blind in in terms of not having that sort of metagame knowledge is fine as long as everybody knows everybody else's hard nose and you know soft nose, I guess you could say. Right. It becomes all the more important Mm -hmm. if you don't want to have those kinds of metagame discussions. If you'd rather keep your character's backstory a secret and, you know, have it come up Mm -hmm. over the course of play, that is totally fine. You don't need to have those kinds of metagame discussions if that's not right for your group. Exactly. But it makes it all the more important that you have a discussion about where your lines are Mm -hmm. because it, I feel like, increases the potential that those things could come up. Yeah, and it, it'll make it so that you personally will have to think a little harder on your definite no's and your maybes, because if you are thinking, oh, well, I've got this, this, and this on my no list, then I should be fine, and something comes up later in a character's backstory that would have been revealed if you had gone over this sort of stuff at a session zero, then that might surprise you and it might, you know, make you feel unsafe. And it might make you feel that you might not be wanting to play at that point. So it's very important to, to talk about safety before the game starts and definitely think about it probably even now or be, uh, before you even start playing with people what your hard no's are, because then you'll be able to go in and know right off the bat. It is really hard to know exactly what 
things are going to bother you. And we talked about it last time, too, that Mm -hmm. it can depend on the day you've had or they may change over the course of time. Something might happen to you while you're playing these games Mm -hmm. or, you know, there's a particular news story or just like life happens. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's impossible to plan for every contingency. Mm -hmm. But that's why we have these other safety tools to kind of catch the things that fall through. But really having this discussion at a session zero is sort of your the best defense to stop those things from happening in the first place. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And what's really nice is if you have similar life backstories to a lot of your friends or so that you're playing with and you maybe forgot one safety tool, there's a chance that they might not have forgotten that, that hard no. And the beauty of the hard no is if anybody at the table has that hard no, then it's, it's a no. Then it's a no. It's not. It's not going to come up if your GM is uh, going to be. You know, whether or not the no's are anonymous, um, or if everybody says what their no's are outright, nobody should be bringing those up once they're established. And that uh, session zero is a perfect time to establish those and to agree no, we're not going to explore these. So it becomes really important to have that open and honest discussion. Like I've been hammering home (laughs) since (laughs) forever that communication, communication, communication. This is a relationship. Please communicate with each other. (laughs) Do it now. Exactly. And session zeros are a great time to figure out what sorts of tools you'll be wanting to use to implement for these safety uh, issues. Uh, And especially not just what tools you're going to use, but how you're going to actually use them during play if it ever comes up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to agree on here is what, not only are we going to use an X card, but here's what it means. Mm -hmm. And also have a discussion that says, this is for sure a thing that we're doing. Right, mm-hmm. because these kinds of tools only work if everybody buys in. Yes. And the reality of like the X card is I tap this card, we stop. Mm-hmm. Nobody has to ask any questions. But if you have a specific player who hasn't bought into this and does start asking questions, it can make things worse. Mm-hmm. So really, session zero needs to be a time that you all come together and say, A, these are the tools that we're going to use. B, this is how we're going to use them. Mm -hmm. C, we are for sure, definitely for real going to use them. Yeah. And if you are the GM that's introducing this, or if you are a player that has come to a table that hasn't any of these safety tools implemented and you want to implement them yourself, just be assertive. Be, you know, sure in your convictions that this is something that everybody will benefit from because they will. And if you are assertive and if you are able to explain everything, it should be no problem that everybody will be able to understand you and use the tools that you are putting forth uh, for the game. One other last thing that I do want to say, because this is a, a criticism that I hear a lot of things like the X card. And I want to just like address it up front and get it out there (laughs) so that nobody can come at me, but also come at me, bro. (laughs) These are not here to derail your game. Mm -hmm. The point of safety tools is not so somebody can say, oh, no, I had a bad roll. I tapped the X card because I don't like the outcome. Mm -hmm. It is not for somebody to say like, oh, no, that makes me feel bad. Like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I have never been in a game where we used an X card or any other kind of safety tool where that has happened. Mm -hmm. They have only ever been used for somebody to say, this is less than amazing. This is something that does not make me comfortable. This is something that bothers me and actively hinders my ability to enjoy this game. Mm -hmm. It is not for, I feel like I'm losing Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I have never had a situation where it's derailed the game. I know Mm -hmm. that, like I said, there has been some criticism that I've heard from people that like it puts a stop to the story that the GM is telling or something like that. And that has never, ever been my experience with it. That is not the point of it. Mm -hmm. The point of it is to say 
this one specific tiny part of this situation is not okay with me. Mm -hmm. It's not to say like, hey, GM, your story sucks. It's not to say like, hey, other players, your character's dumb. Like that's Mm -hmm. not what's happening here. And so I think that buy-in is really, really important. And I would really hope that people treat these tools seriously and not only like try and explain to other people why they should use them, but also use them seriously on your own. Like don't Mm -hmm. use them to goof around or like, be dumb. Mm-hmm. Use them, use them in the way that they're meant to be used, so that they can maintain their value and their integrity when exactly. they do get used. Exactly. You know, that's my that's my speech. <laughs> <laughs> and and the real beauty of it is, if you're introducing this in a game at home, and you have a group of friends that go to different conventions, that go to different game stores and play there, they'll probably be inspired to use it there too. And the more people that start using it during their games, especially at cons and game stores, the more people get exposed. And the more people get exposed, the The more more wonderful, beautiful, happy games we can have. Exactly. Or wonderful, beautiful, very sad games, if that's what you're into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll be able to have the safety tools to have those sad games in a safe and welcoming environment. All right. Are we ready to like really do this? Ooh, yes, the meat and potatoes of safety. Yes. All right, so we've covered what you should do before your game. Mm -hmm. We are going to dive in and talk about specific tools that you can use while you're playing in the trenches during your game. Number one. Yes. (laughs) The probably best known, I think, by this point. It's certainly the one that I'm most familiar with and the one that Mm -hmm. I've seen the most at con games and even in my home games. The X card. The X card. The X card. Mm -hmm. We definitely talked a little bit about this with Alex um, when we did our Starcrossed episodes because that is a built-in tool of that game. But the X card essentially is a card with an X on it. You put it in the middle of the table and... When something is not cool, mm-hmm. you tap it. That's yep. it. That's it. That's the whole mechanic. That That's literally it. And it's great because you can take literally an index card or a sheet of paper, and it's two lines, slash, slash, cross them in the middle, and you've got an X. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. Uh, Run that by me again. I know. I, I know. Okay. This okay. Slash, slash, cross them in the middle. Okay. And that, that's your X card. Oh, my God. I know. Mind blown. So easy. <laughs> and if you if you have a bigger table, it might be good to have multiple X cards on the table, uh, just as long as they're within reach of everybody. Absolutely. That's a good point, too, because you don't want people to feel, like, awkward and called out. Yeah. Like, let me dive over the table. I got to X this. Oh, it's too far away. I'll forget like about Like, slow it. motion. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. What... I guess, what makes the X card special? Like, what makes it different than just being like, no, whoa, stop, hold up? Well, the great thing about the X card is it's tap it. You don't even have to say anything. Tap it, hold it up, and automatically you have a stop to what has happened just recently. And it gets erased. Something happens, you tap the X card... That something no longer happened, and you get to replay it in a different way if you like. Definitely. I think the beauty of the social contract involved with the X card is that no one should have to explain why they feel that way. Yes. And that to me is the most important mm-hmm. part. Zero. Not questions. only just being able to stop and say, with you know, with that, by that simple motion of like tapping that card, saying, I'm not okay with this. Mm-hmm. But the beauty of like, we all agree that we stop, that's it, we move on. Yes. And, you know, for me, not having to explain that it is is wonderful. Because I think that a lot of times when you have to, like, explain to people, like, why something bothers you, it mm-hmm. furthers that feeling of helplessness and discomfort and, right. you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's it's really beautiful to not have to explain. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that, like, if you are comfortable explaining and saying, you know what, here's why this thing bothered me, yeah. 
just to sort of prevent it from coming up again in the future. Mm -hmm. You certainly can. There's nothing that says that you can't explain it. Yeah. But you should never, ever feel obligated to. And that, to me, Mm -hmm. is like one of the most important parts of this tool. Right. Now, uh, that's not to say that you may not have to explain what bothered you. Because there might be something kind of obscure about the scene that didn't really sit well with you at all. Um, Mm -hmm. I I can think of when I was running a game for uh, International Podcast Month. I I did a horror game. And one of the questions I asked beforehand is, what sorts of things will you absolutely Mm -hmm. not want to see in a horror game? Because that's really important. And being right around Halloween, I'm sure a lot of you will be playing horror games relatively soon. Mm -hmm. So... If they did not say some of their rather obscure, like, horror tropes to avoid, it may have come up in play. And since there may have been a lot going on in those scenes, we don't know exactly if it was the zombie without a head running after you that said, no, no thanks, or the the guy that got a knife in his eye. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes you do have to specifically say, like, this is the the thing that bothers me. Yeah. But you don't have to say why. And so it, it's, like I said, that's the beauty of this social contract, but it is a social contract. And mm-hmm. that goes along with that session zero discussion of how we will use these tools and agreeing that we'll use mm-hmm. these tools, the understanding that you don't have to explain. And yeah. that nobody, you know, like that you as another player outside of the person who tapped the X card should not ask any questions either Mm -hmm. because there are times too, where, you know, somebody asks me a question and I feel obligated to answer, you know? And so I I don't want to be put in that situation either. So don't Mm -hmm. put people in that, you know, in that position either. That's really, really important. Yeah. There are a lot of people out there that are just natural people pleasers. And if somebody pushes a little too hard, they'll probably on, unbeknownst to themselves, uh, answer, um, and not enjoy giving that answer, but they'll do it because that's the type of person they are in life because of X, Y, or Z reason. Mm -hmm. So don't push it. It's as simple as that. Right. It always is, isn't it? It is. (laughs) Just don't, guys, don't be a jerk, man. Don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Yeah. Let people do their thing. <laughs> Life lessons from Character Creation Cast. Yes. <laughs> so I, I really think that, like that, like I said, the X card is the one that I've seen the most. It's the one mm-hmm. that I personally am most familiar with. It's probably the easiest to use. Yep. Um, and I, I love it. It's such a good, it's such a good tool. Like, just man, use use the X card. If you take nothing else away from this, <laughs> get you an X card. Yeah, it is it is really the easiest one to implement and pretty much the, probably the easiest one to understand, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I would strongly agree. Well, I I would say in conjunction with another tool that's coming up soon, uh probably a really one of the easiest ones. They're all pretty easy, honestly. That's true. Once, 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 effort, they're, once they're explained, <laughs> super easy. And yep. that's what we're here for. Outside of the X card, another really cool tool is called Script Change. This one was developed by Bree Sheldon um, and is available online. I also put a link to it in our Session Zero document under our safety tools. Mm-hmm. But this one sort of expands a little bit on the X card and pulls in some other similar but slightly different tools Mm -hmm. so this one has something that's called it has rewind it has fast forward pause things like that but the way they work is there are these symbols the document that Bree put together has actual cards that you can use at your table otherwise you can just kind of write down the symbols like you would find on your remote or an old school vcr if Mm -hmm. you're old enough to remember those (laughs) Um, but the the beauty of it is that you know if something does happen you can kind of rewind and say let's reset that scene let's Mm -hmm. let's start that whole thing over it's not just this one particular thing i didn't like whereas you know the x card is kind of that like finite scalpel you can say like this one particular thing was bad Mm -hmm. this kind of allows you to go back and say you know what that whole event it just didn't like let's back up and start over yeah 
It also has fast forward in which you can kind of say, you know what, this thing is coming. I want to just like, let's just jump past that. We Mm -hmm. can say that it happened, but I don't want to see it happen. Right. We talked a little bit, I think, last time about like fading to black. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of similar to that. You can say like, let's just skip over that part of it. But Mm -hmm. we will say it happened. It seems to be the safety mechanic version of a veil. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The other cool thing about this one is that it has things like instant replay, which is meant to be used right after a scene happens. You can kind of stop the game and out of character talk about what just happened to kind of say, you know, like I didn't quite understand it or this was really intense and I need a minute to process it and kind of go over that scene together. Mm-hmm. Which is, I think, a really cool tool because there are times where you like have a really intense moment and you're like, I just need a second to like process that. And can we talk about it out of game? Mm -hmm. And so that's what this instant replay tool is for. The other really cool one that I love is Highlight Reel, which is meant to be used at the end of a session to talk about strictly positive things that happened with the intention of helping people kind of feel out things that went really well Mm -hmm. and things to sort of bring forward in a session, which I think is so cool. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about like things that could go better or, you know, how to give kind of feedback about things. But this highlight reel tool is really cool for saying, here's what went really great. Mm -hmm. How can we continue this? You know? So like I said, this is kind of an expansion on the X card and sort of gives you other tools to kind of manipulate the game around that. And again, I, I know that there are people that will kind of feel uncomfortable with things like the rewind tool. Mm-hmm. It's it's really about having those discussions with your group to say, this is how we're going to use it. Yeah. And because safety tools aren't useful if they get abused. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think, you know, having that contract with your group, it's really like what all of this is going to come down to is just having this social contract with your group to say, mm-hmm. These things are important. Yeah. And th- there's a couple other cool features of the script change. I-, I was just seeing that there's the frame by frame mechanic, which if you're approaching a scene that seems a little too close to your comfort zone, um, mm-hmm. you can call for a frame by frame and you can actually slow down the action a little bit and let yourself process things one step at a time. So that way... It's not just one big gut punch after another hitting you into your your uncomfortable veil area, I guess you could say. I don't know how to say that without it sounding uh, completely strange. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, the, the beauty of this one is that it, it's perfect for those things that we that we described as your soft nose, uh-huh. right? And I think that it's it's perfect for those situations that I talked about in our Session Zero episode where I said you need ongoing and enthusiastic consent. Mm -hmm. So this frame by frame tool is really good for constantly checking in and saying, okay, now we're here. Mm -hmm. Are we still okay with this? We move the scene forward a little bit, check in again. Are we still okay with this? Because for those things that are soft no's that you as a player have said, I'm okay with this if it's done the right way, constantly checking in is really important to making sure that it stays okay. Yeah. And so ha- being able to kind of slow down the game and say, I want to make sure that we're constantly checking in with this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of different things that we talked about with the script change, but we definitely have links to that documentation available on both our session zero document and on our on show notes. So uh, definitely check those out if you have definitely. any questions or, or hit us up on Discord if you want or on Twitter. It doesn't matter. Well, we will be happy to talk to you about safety tools anytime we are available. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The next safety tool in our toolbox is one of my favorites, the lines and veils. This is pretty, pretty simple. It's the, uh, the hard line which is do not cross. This is my no. This is something that we will not explore, period. And mm-hmm. you don't have to explain yourself. It's nope. just, this is it. Accept it and avoid it. And then there's the veils. This is your maybes. This is your soft nose. This is the stuff that I don't mind if this stuff happens in the game, but I don't want to play it out. 
a lot of people will use this for the much more intimate moments of a role-playing game. That's a really mm-hmm. big example. Some people will be like, I don't mind if there's sex in my game, but I don't want to play it out. So right. let's fade to black. Everybody knows it happened. And then we'll pick up afterwards. And it might even be fade to black and we'll pick up, you know, in the the aftermath of mm-hmm. it. Uh, as long as the the entire uncomfortable action that you're uncomfortable with doesn't come up. And that's perfectly fine. That's called a veil. It's just a, a fade to black to avoid uncomfortable stuff that still technically happens in your story. Right. And usually, I think the easiest example of those, like you said, is like romance or intimacy in games. There are things that like you wouldn't really put on your list of no's. I love romance in my games. Mm -hmm. I, I love, you know, those kinds of stories and that kind of stuff. I wouldn't put that on a list of hard no's, and I really wouldn't even put it on a list of soft no's. Right. But when I get to the game and I'm looking at you across the table and mm-hmm. suddenly I'm like, ooh, this is real weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's an agreement to be able to say like, okay, and we fade to black. Yep. That's, I think that for me is the cool part about a veil too, is that it's not a thing that I have to decide ahead of time. We can be in the middle of the scene and yeah. I can say, and scene. Yep. Like that's, <laughs> that's it. We're good. Okay. And we pick up tomorrow morning. Yep, you know, exactly. that's, that's the kind of thing that I don't have to define ahead of time because those are the kinds of things that like, I can say, yeah, I'm really totally cool with romance and games. And then when I'm looking at this person in the eyes across the table, mm-hmm. suddenly it feels very weird. Especially um, if you like them a lot and it's just really awkward to pretend like them when you really, really like them. Oh, yeah. Pretend married. <laughs> it's my favorite trope. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that can be really uncomfortable for people. But I think that's the cool part about veils, too, is that it's it can be a thing that you decide ahead of time. It can be a thing that's on your list of soft nose but it can also be a thing that just as it's happening you're like nope that's good we're Mm -hmm. done we don't want to rewind and say it didn't happen we don't want to tap the x card and say i'm not okay with this we just want to say i've seen enough thank you Mm -hmm. exactly it's when you you fast forward through the icky parts in the movie Yes, yeah, when you're watching that movie. with This is for when you're watching that movie with your parents. Uh-huh. And <laughs> that's what lines and veils are. Yep. What do you mean yep. this is a hard R movie with a lot yeah. of uh, very I uncomfortable things? Oh, man, I don't remember this from when I watched it with my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what lines and veils are for. Uh-huh. <laughs> Another thing that I, I really like as a tool is the support flower. Yes. I think this is one that Senda and Phil talk about a lot yes. in, in their games. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about this one, again, much like the script change stuff, is that it has the ability to also say when things are going well. Mm-hmm. So the way this works is it's a three color scheme. It's yellow, red, green, like a stoplight, um, shaped like a flower. When things are going well and you want to continue to explore something, you can tap the green. When things are okay right now, but maybe we're edging into a territory that I'm not totally comfortable with, I can tap the yellow and say like, hey, let's just, you know, keep an eye on the situation. Mm -hmm. And then the red is a situation where you would use something like the X card. You can say, nope, this is no good. Yes, exactly. And... (laughs) They talk about it usually as a form of active consent. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really great because it's, if you love what's going on, you can use your safety tool saying, I love it. Keep it going. And that's one of the greatest parts about it is it reinforces the thought of, I can use these tools. And if you're constantly using it for, hey, this is great, now you're thinking, oh, yeah, this is right in front of me and I can use it for whatever. And then something bad happens and you're like, oh, yeah, I've got my tool. Duh. Let me just use it. Yeah, that's really nice, too, because I think that we have a hesitance sometimes, right, to put a stop to things or to say that you're, you know, like, you don't want to be the one that stalls things out Mm -hmm. or, you know, like there's... 
there's definitely some social pressure involved sometimes. Yes. And you don't always want to be like, oh, I don't want to be the killjoy. I don't want to be the wet blanket of this uh-huh. game, right? Yeah. And so having a tool that allows you to say both yes and no and something in between mm-hmm. kind of encourages you to get used to using the tool when things are good so that when they aren't good, you're already like in that headspace. Exactly. Yeah. It's, Which it's so is, nice. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Ugh, I'm so, you guys, I'm so excited about all these safety tools. I know. Ah, um, play better games. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there, there is a new one that Send and Phil are working on right now, especially for their game Turning Point, which is a very emotionally charged game, which I really hope we can create characters for sometime Ooh. because it sounds so cool. But it's a, it's a hand signal safety tool. Um, oh. They talked a little bit about it on Pandas Talking Games. I don't know exactly which one it is offhand, but I will research that and we'll put that in the show notes for next time. But it has uh, like a stop hand, it's uh, an okay to check in or something like that. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can use. But what's really great about it is it, it's good for online play where you have webcams. It's good for at the table. And it is great for LARPs. Mm. So it's it's a really quick way to to actively pull people and to actively say you're feeling unsafe or you're feeling great about the scene. It's a very active consent, like the support flower, uh, but it's all hand signals, which is really cool. Yeah, and the nice thing about hand signals, too, is that you can do them, like, while you're still talking and doing other things, Mm -hmm. too. I mean, not to say that you can't with, like, a support flower or something, but you do have to, like, you know, stop and read or whatever. But, like, I can, you know, I can give you a thumbs up or an okay, like, while Mm -hmm. we're just talking in the middle of a scene and, you know. Right, exactly. And, of course, there are probably going to be some players out there that are uh, uh, physically disabled in not being able to use their hands uh, as well as others. Um, so there are definitely alternative safety tools out there that will be a lot easier for them to use as well. Yeah, I mean, and certainly something like the support pl- flower, too. If you have players that are colorblind or something like that, you can adjust the colors as long as everybody agrees on what each color means. Then exactly. we are A-OK. Yeah, and it's it's not just colors, it's spaces on the flower. So it, Yeah, it, it does have wording on it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot of different things there, and some of these are going to be a little bit more accessible than others, but that's just something that you'll want to keep in mind. And what's really great is you can adjust these for Mm -hmm. your group. If you think that a tool is almost perfect for you or for your group, you can adjust it. And what's great is it's a social contract. Just like language, if everybody agrees what something means, that's what it means. Yep. Mm-hmm. Another sort of, this is like kind of a free form. It's not really necessarily a tool, but mm-hmm. it's, I think, a really important thing to bring up and to talk about and to use during games is an open door policy. Yeah. To be able to say to players at the beginning of your game... And this, I think, is especially important in con games and games where you don't know the people that you're playing with, Mm -hmm. but definitely is something that you can use all the time whenever, to allow players to come and go as they please. Now, this doesn't mean, like, getting up in the middle of it and going and wandering off for a while and then coming back when you feel like it. Mm -hmm. This is to be able to say to a player, you know what, if something is not okay with you, you are more than within your right to get up and leave. Mm Mm-hmm. You don't have to feel like you are obligated to stay here for four hours if this is not going okay with you. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is sometimes people need to, like, take a breath or, like, walk away for a minute. Something is kind of a lot to process and you just need to get up and just, like, take a minute. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are a person like me with real bad ADHD and you just, like, can't be sitting anymore and I just need to get up and I need to take a lap and I need to come back. Yep. And, you know, to be able to have an open door policy so that I don't have to wait until it's my turn to, like, get up and have this break. Yeah. Or to not feel like I'm totally interrupting anything by Mm -hmm. saying, like, okay, can I have a minute now? Do I need to raise Mm -hmm. my hand? Do I need to, you know, any of that kind of stuff? Yep. To be able to say, like, you know what, we're all adults here. Yeah. 
do what you need to do. Exactly. It's it, you don't have to wait for the the traditional Dungeons and Dragons combat. It's just finished my turn. Now I can get up. Rule. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is the uh, this is the Amelia rule. Let's uh-huh. call it the Amelia rule. The, please, please let me get up. I just need to move around a little bit. I'm just exactly Whoa. exactly can't sit anymore. And uh, <laughs> it, it you can usually just do that and not have to worry about explaining yourself with the open door policy or you could just say you know i'm just going to be a minute uh keep playing and then you nobody will bother you about getting up and walking around for a minute yep and like i said that's a good thing to it, it's a good policy to have during the game but also a good thing to establish during your session zero too to say like hey this is okay if you need to get up and just like take a sec it's mm-hmm. fine Exactly. Totally. You're welcome to come back. Mm-hmm. Yes. And probably the final tool, which is not a tool, but it is a tool, is checking in. Your words. Your words are the most important tool. <laughs> exactly. Use your words. Use your words. It is extremely important. You can have all the safety tools in the world. And if you don't check in from time to time, you might not know if the tools are actually working. You may have the X card on the table, but like we said before, maybe people are reluctant. If a scene is getting a little on the intense side, that might be a good time to check in, depending on a lot of different factors, of course. But it's good to check in to make sure people are feeling safe. Read everybody's faces as you're playing the game. If somebody looks a little like, or, or uncomfortable or, or, you know, wanting, looking for anything to do aside from be in the game at that moment, check in, see if everybody's Mm -hmm. okay. You don't have to single anybody out. You can just say, Hey, how are we all feeling about this right now? If anybody has any opinions on the current scene, please let us know or or let's talk about it right now because this is a little intense right now. It can be as simple as kind of looking around at the other people at the table and saying, we good? Yeah. Still good? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, like, it doesn't have to be a full conversation. Mm -hmm. It certainly can if you want to. And if if that's a thing that you feel is warranted, totally go for it. Exactly. But it, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a thing that stops the game. I think Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of my, what I want to get across to people too, is that these safety tools do not have to slow things down. Mm -hmm. They don't have to stop things except when they should be stopped. Exactly. Right? Mm Mm-hmm. That's- so checking in with people is, it's so important, you guys, to make sure that things are not only okay, but still okay. Mm-hmm. And that people are still feeling good about them. Because I, we keep using the word okay, but like, it, it should be more than okay. It mm-hmm. should be great. Like, are things still A plus? Yes. If it's suboptimal, mm-hmm. feel free to kick it up to amazing. Exactly. That's what all <laughs> of this is for. Exactly. If you want your games to be amazing. One thing that we really don't have a lot of tools for, though, Ryan, that I do kind of want to talk about, because Mm -hmm. this is where the checking in becomes really important, is for, like, those out-of-game experiences. Oh, yes. There are times where you are at a table with people who are (laughs) (laughs) suboptimal. I have played in those kinds of games where I have been, like, physically uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. Um, not with what's happening in the story, but with the other people around the table. Yeah. They've made me feel uncomfortable or unwelcome. Oh, yes. And this is where something like the open door policy and checking in become really, really important. Mm-hmm. Because you want to look at people and say, not only are like, are we okay with what's happening in this story, but do we all feel okay like being here in this space? Yeah. And making sure that everybody knows ahead of time in that session zero that it's okay to go to your GM and say, I'm really uncomfortable with the way that this other player is treating me Mm -hmm. or the things that they're saying or, you know, things like that. Because there's, and you can certainly use the X card for something out of game too. That's really important to remember Mm -hmm. that if a a player is making comments or, you know, anything like that, that you can certainly say, you know what? No, stop. Yeah. Not okay. Oh, exactly. Um, It doesn't have to only be used for in-game stuff, but 
definitely you should establish some sort of line of communication or a way for your players or GM or whoever to have that kind of discussion and say, like, look, this other player, like, their behavior is not okay with me. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, it's certainly a thing that we really, really hope doesn't happen to you because it's really awful when it does. Mm-hmm. So step number one, y'all don't be that person, okay? Don't be that person. Um, s- yeah. Step number two have some kind of line of communication or some way to discuss that and say, this isn't okay. How can we correct it? Mm-hmm. And and really have the courage to say when something isn't okay with you. Yeah. And to approach your GM ahead of time and say, I need a way to tell you when things aren't okay. Mm-hmm. Because you shouldn't be playing a game that isn't great. Right. And it, this is... This is like a little bit of a personal moment for me, but to say that like I had so many people tell me that playing no game at all is better than a bad game. And I thought, no, that can't be true. I want gaming in my life. It's really important to me. Mm -hmm. But y'all, it's true. Mm -hmm. Like I stopped playing with this really awful group and it was so much better Mm -hmm. than going and feeling uncomfortable week in and week out. So like... As much as I want people to incorporate these safety tools and to make the best of these situations, like also, if it's not right for you, it's not right for you. And don't feel like you have to stick it out just because you want to play games. That's really Mm -hmm. crappy that somebody put you in that situation. And I am so sorry if you've been there. Yeah. But like, there are good groups out there. And like, don't. Just, like, don't put yourself in that situation. Don't be in that situation if you don't have to. And don't put anybody else in that situation. And honestly, if you are the one bringing these safety tools to the table and nobody or a majority or even one person refuses flat out to use them or to agree to them, maybe that is a good time to use your own open door policy and head out of there. Because if somebody refuses to use even the most basic of safety tools, chances are they are not going to be the most safe player. If it's one person, it might be a good idea to talk to the rest of the group and say, hey, we're all on the same page here, but this person is not. What can we do about that? Maybe that can be salvaged. Maybe it can't. And maybe that person will have to go. Um, Or maybe you and the rest of the group pack up and play elsewhere without that person. But the important thing is, is if everybody agrees to this wholeheartedly and not sarcastically, then you're probably going to be in a good, safe space with decently safe people, most likely. Yeah, I I just... That's a thing that I really want to stress to people. And I a thing that, like, I really want people to know and I want people to understand all of you everybody listening is worth more than that Mm -hmm. as a person and your time is precious your opinions are precious your value as a human being Mm -hmm. is important and if somebody is not respecting that whether it's in a role-playing game or whether it's in life like don't don't waste your time with that Mm -hmm. that's you deserve more than that. You are better than that. And you you deserve nothing but the best. And so don't don't sell yourself short mm-hmm. just because you want to participate and you want to be part of something. Find a group of people who will value you for who you are. Mm-hmm. And right now with the internet and with the ability to hop in virtual games with so many different people across the entire planet you can find a game as long as you can get access to the internet and maybe a microphone as long as you can record or talk to other people online you can play games you can even do play by post which requires just text Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean and, and certainly like there are 
there are certainly plenty of reasons to have hesitation about things like that too, that like I personally have, have had a lot of hesitation to play with online groups. I only started like a year, year and a half Mm -hmm. ago and I got really lucky that that the people that I played with are now the people that I podcast with. Like I got so lucky there, Mm -hmm. but you know, there are plenty of reasons to like feel sort of uncomfortable with that. Like I, I I really honestly hope that we're building a community that can help people feel better about that. I think that, the the podcasting community around role playing games has really been a lot more inclusive than the role playing community as a whole. Yeah, it's but it's like been good yeah, so I mean well. just it's yeah, it's really wonderful. There's some really wonderful people out there, mm-hmm. and and all of you listening deserve to play with those kinds of people. Exactly. And like, don't just people were not lying to me when they said no game is better than a bad game. Mm-hmm. Just it, don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) I just, I want the best for people, you guys. (laughs) Like everybody, I, I, it's such a bad experience and I care so much Uh about people having, because I love gaming and it it has the chance to be this really beautiful, life-changing thing. And I want that for people. I want people to have that kind of experience. And I, I hope that we're helping with that. And I, oh, all of you out there listening, I hope you find it. I really do. Uh Uh-huh. I agree. I Absolutely, 100% with exactly what Amelia just said. (laughs) (laughs) As usual. (laughs) Okay, so with all of my really emotional baggage (laughs) out of the way, (laughs) Ryan, does safety end when the game ends? Absolutely not. It does not. (laughs) And we're not talking about the end of a campaign. We're not talking about uh, the end of a session. We're talking about once you're done with your characters and you put them away into your folder or three ring binder or what have you, and you are at the table, you can be dealing still with emotions. You could be going home and dealing with emotions from the game. You could be at home at two in the morning dealing with emotions from the game they don't end ever the feelings they never end ryan nope if you've had an especially intense game and you enjoyed yourself especially it will stick with you and those emotions are not just your character's emotions they're yours as well and what sort of concept is this called amelia uh this is the concept of bleed Mm -hmm. Again, we keep going back to our Starcrossed episodes. I think that those episodes have such good discussion of safety and consent mm-hmm. and these kinds of topics because that's a game that is really emotionally mm-hmm. intense. Thank you, Alex. Um, yes, thank you, Alex. You're wonderful. <laughs> I'm so excited for your game. Mm-hmm. But those are those are feelings of bleed, of sort of internalizing the things that your character is experiencing can be really rough i mean sometimes they're really great something really great happens to your character in the game and you also feel good yeah. but sometimes something bad happens to your character or someone who's important to your character mm-hmm. or even just in the story and that bleeds over into real life and you take those emotions with you yes. it can be a lot to process and so one of the tools that that they use a lot in larp and almost all larp it's a thing that I think we can get a lot of use out of in role playing mm-hmm. games is the idea of a session, like an after session debrief. Yeah. We talked a little bit about it with the script change tool, but just taking a moment to sort of reground yourself and say, I am myself now, not this character. Yep. You know, like here's my name, here is where I am physically in my space. Mm-hmm. And then to sort of have a discussion with your group about, what things happened in the game, how you feel about them, how you want to take those things forward or not take those things forward, just as like your your group after game therapy session, Mm -hmm. essentially. Like this is a good time to sort of remind yourself that I am myself. I am not my character. Mm -hmm. That is okay. Yes. That is good. And it doesn't make those things that I experienced any less valid. Mm Mm-hmm. But a reminder that like those, especially those bad things that they may have experienced or even just those like emotionally really heavy things that they experienced are not things that I personally experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And it's very important when you're at the table in this debrief session, and it's very important when others are at the table in this debrief session, to be supportive. If somebody yes. is feeling very intense emotions because of the game, regardless of the source, don't make fun of them. Don't bring out the, oh, hey, we're done with games, so now we can joke around with each other, ha ha ha, sort of stuff. When somebody's trying to process through uh, all sorts of intense emotions, because A, sometimes it's it's good to just live in those intense emotions with a supportive bunch of friends. Uh, yeah, sometimes that can be really cathartic. Yeah. And if you have to cry, go for it. Because if a game can make you cry, that's just beautiful like what a cool game like Like, what a powerful experience and a powerful story (laughs) that you guys told together no and i'm saying if you're gonna cry if it's a good cry let it Mm -hmm. out uh absolutely um even if it's not a good cry you can still let it out but just make sure people know you know i'm i'm feeling this way because of it, it was really good like, I feel right. really good about what happened. If you don't feel good about what happened and that's why you're crying, that might be good to bring up. And then everybody, regardless, support them. Be there for your friends. Yeah, it's just mostly important in, in this kind of situation. And as we've been saying this whole time, to be respectful of people's feelings and of their limits. And to know how to engage with those in a way that is going to be positive and understanding and comforting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's hard. Sometimes you don't know what people need. And in those situations, the best thing to do is ask. Because sometimes what that person wants is somebody to give them a hug. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you really don't want that. Sometimes what I want is somebody to acknowledge that I am feeling a a specific way and that is valid Mm -hmm. sometimes like that's enough for me is somebody say yeah yeah i get i get where you're coming from and you're right yeah affirming someone's bleed is uh, is amazingly helpful in a lot of situations absolutely and so really having a debrief can go a couple different ways it can kind of be a formal thing that you do after every session. You do it in this certain order. You do it this certain way. Mm -hmm. And your group can kind of develop a way that works for them. There are certainly lots of tools out there on how to do a debrief. I've linked to one particular uh, article about it in our Session Zero document. But especially if you look at websites that are specifically designed for LARPs, there's a lot of information on how to do a good debrief. Mm -hmm. But the other way is to just sort of have an informal conversation afterwards. If that feels more comfortable for your group Mm -hmm. to sit down and say, how are we feeling about all of this? You know, and just kind of have a a really sort of relaxed discussion. Sometimes that's what you need to just sort of ease back into the real world after something that's been really emotionally intense. Exactly. And, you know, like we said, the biggest thing there is just making sure that you are acknowledging and respecting the way that people feel like don't look at somebody and be like that's a dumb thing yeah. to be sad about don't be, like don't be a jerk. you know it's like not a real person <laughs> that you're crying about yeah it's like well but it in that moment uh-huh. like when you're really immersed in that it it can feel very real mm-hmm. it's just as valid as crying at a really good movie it's just as valid as crying at a really good book it, mm-hmm. it in some instances it's even more valid because you are putting yourself into some other character's shoes and sharing a very intense emotional space with that yeah. character. Role playing has the ability to bring out empathy in ways that not very many other mm-hmm. media has the has the ability to do because it's one of the few situations where you are actively putting yourself Mm -hmm. in someone else's shoes and acting out a situation that has not happened to you yeah like we can watch a movie but in those instances you're still watching that happen to someone Mm -hmm. else whereas when you are role-playing you are actively part of that story Mm -hmm. and so bleed is a very real thing that can happen and it's a very valid afterwards to say that was intense yeah more of that please but that was intense (laughs) 
Right. But I still need to talk about it. Like, that's the thing, too, is that bleed is not always bad. Uh And having a good cry afterwards is not a sign that it was a bad thing or a thing that you didn't want. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I've I've talked a lot about in our episodes, like the fact that I get a lot of satisfaction of playing out really emotional things Mm -hmm. that I can't in the real world or that would have long term implications in the real world. But that doesn't mean like just because I enjoy doing those things does not mean that I don't still experience those intense emotions mm-hmm. that are sometimes negative. Exactly. As long as you're not pushing the boundaries, which you shouldn't be with all the safety tools that you have implemented in the game. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So like the debrief is sort of your your last your last piece to say, like, are we all okay before we go home? Yeah. And what's really cool is even after you do go home, it's generally pretty cool uh if you are have an open communication with your game master to talk to them a day or two later and say you know i'm still processing stuff from the game is it okay to talk about that and if Mm -hmm. if you're the gm please have a open policy if if you're comfortable with it of of being able to be there for your players because you're you're not just a group of friends you're not just you know, playing a game, you're not just telling a story. You're you're also there supporting each other. I mean, we're we're all human beings and if we're not supporting each other, we kind of uh are not in a good place in the world. So Absolutely. And and it certainly doesn't have to be just directed at GMs yeah. too, right? Like players support each mm-hmm. other. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes that's more powerful to me too, is to say like this character and my character went through this thing together and maybe this player is oh, feeling yeah. that way too. And so you can kind of have that discussion with somebody else who was in a similar situation. Mm-hmm. Having those discussions between sessions is really a really good way to kind of process things. Exactly. And we talked about that in our, our last episode too, that sometimes you walk away and you're like, okay, I'm feeling okay. And then a day or two later, you're like, you know, I just, I need to talk about this because I'm still feeling those feelings. Yep. yep. You know, I need to process a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And there are, there are lots of ways to do that, whether it's by communicating with another player or with your GM, if it's by like sort of journaling out some of those feelings mm-hmm. Um, talking to somebody who wasn't in the game to kind of get their perspective on it. Yep. Those are all, all kinds of tools that you can use to to sort of like, I don't want to say set yourself right, but <laughs> to kind of process a lot of stuff that's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's good to process things. Absolutely. Don't bottle it up, you guys. No. <laughs> More life lessons from character creation kids. Yeah, okay. You guys, I feel like this is a really... Ugh. I'm also trying to stop saying you guys because I'm trying to get better about uh-huh. that. I'm going to have to like cut all of that. I, I've noticed every time. Don't worry. I know. I have two when I catch myself afterwards. Uh. I hate it. I hate it. Uh. I'm much better when I'm typing it. I almost never do it when I'm mm-hmm. typing, but when I'm when I'm on a roll. Yes. Yeah. So, Ryan, this was a really pretty emotionally heavy episode how are you feeling should we have like a post post recording debrief yeah here? I, how, are, how are you doing I, I was a little shaky at first because uh, i was a little nervous getting into a topic as important as safety at the table but i got a lot mm-hmm. more comfortable as the session went on and uh, at the end here i feel uh, extremely good about what we did here and what we covered because we talked about a lot of really important things, and it makes me feel good that we're getting that information out there for everybody. I'm feeling really good about the things that we are putting out into the world mm-hmm. right now, and I think that this is going to be really helpful to a lot of people. I hope that it's going to be really helpful to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit emotional for me, but I I hope that people will take away from that that I'm very passionate about this, mm-hmm. and I... I just love them all so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. I think that that's most of what we have to say here. We do have some other additional articles and things that we put in our episode zero document, mm-hmm. which is already out in the world. Yep. If all of you have other safety tools that you like to use or have heard about or are interested in, we would really be excited to hear about mm-hmm. them. You can let us know on Twitter or in our Discord or email us, whatever works for you. 
but we would certainly love to add more stuff to our Session Zero document um, because this is really important and we want people to have all of the tools right at their fingertips. So you have no excuse not to be safe. And with the power of the internet, we can modify things after the fact. In real time. In real time. I did a little bit right before we recorded (laughs) this. Exactly. And uh, if you missed any of the links that we may have talked about, but actually didn't give web addresses for because we've got show notes. Go to, we're not going to read them out. That's oh, really boring. Go the, <laughs> just go to the show notes. The show notes will have links to everything we have talked about, everything we have covered in this episode. And we will also have show notes to our session zero document. So if you don't know how to get to it, just look at the show notes. It comes along with every single one of these episodes. Or tweet at us. We'll gladly, we'll gladly uh, just send you a link right there. We will send you a link anytime that you tweet at us, anytime you send us a message on Discord. We are more than happy to make these tools available to you because we want you to have the best experience possible. Absolutely. I do want to be clear on one thing, too. I got a question today from somebody saying, hey, can we just use this? Yes. Do it. Do it. Just use it. That's what it's for. Mm-hmm. Make a copy of it onto your own drive. I do have it locked so that other people can't edit it just because I'm a little possessive of it. <laughs> and I just don't want, you know, people to go in there and start putting their own yeah. game stuff in there. But make a copy of it, save it to your drive, or just copy and paste it into a Word document, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. I don't care. This is a tool for you. Please take it. Have it. It is my gift to the world. <laughs> yes. So make use of it as much as you want. Modify it. Add your own stuff. Do what you Mm -hmm. will with it once it is saved to your own drive. And just have fun. Yep. That's what all of this is all about. Have the best game ever. Mm -hmm. Be your best selves, everyone. Be your best selves. We we will be back next week. Excellent. Bye. 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 Character Evolution Cast, like Character Creation Cast, is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even find some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter, at Lord Neptune. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license, or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. This episode was edited by Amelia Antrim. Further information for today's guest can also be found in the show notes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like Modifier. Modifier is an interview show hosted by Megan Dornbrock, all about why and how people change games. From the hobbyist to the professional, from house rules to publication, we all have in mind a better way to play. What's yours?